Another thing we can do is find the length of a polar curve. So if you have some polar curve, r equals f of theta, um, with theta going from some angle to another angle, from say alpha to beta, um, and we want to find the length of that curve, remember that every polar curve gives a, a parameterization. So the parameterization comes from the fact that x is r cosine theta, and r is a function of theta. So we have f of theta cosine theta. By the same token, since y is r sine theta, we get f of theta sine theta. Remember when you have a parametric curve, a little length element was the square root of dx d parameter squared plus dy d parameter squared times d parameter. So this is a little bit of arc length for a parametric curve. What we can do is just figure out what does this give us in the specific case when the parameterization has this form, and that will give us the length of a polar curve. So notice dx d theta is going to be the derivative of this, which requires the product rule. You get df d theta times cos and theta, through the first times the second plus the first, which is f of theta times the derivative of the second, which is minus sine theta. And dy d theta is equal to the derivative of the first. In this case, the second is sine, right? So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now what we need to do is to square both of those derivatives and then add them up. So let me, over here, square both those derivatives, dx d theta squared. Okay, if I square these binomials, what I'm going to get is df d theta squared times cosine squared theta. And then the middle term will be 2. It's going to be a negative 2 because of that negative sign there. So negative 2 f df d theta times sine cosine, so sine theta cosine theta. And then the last term is going to give me f squared sine squared theta. Ooh, let's run off the page. f squared sine squared theta. And we get almost the same thing for dy d theta. When we square it, we get df d theta squared sine squared theta. That's for multiplying the first term by itself. And then we get 2 times f times df d theta times sine theta times cosine theta. Because this term times this term happens twice. And then you get the product of the last terms, which is going to be f squared times cosine squared theta. Now if you add those up, you get dx d theta squared plus dy d theta squared equal to, now let's see, we have the same number, df d theta squared. One time it's times cosine squared, and the other time it's times sine squared. So I factor out the df d theta squared, I have cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So we just get df d theta squared. Now these middle terms, they're almost exactly the same. They both have a 2 f df d theta sine theta cosine theta, but one's negative, one's positive. So this term cancels that term. Finally, the last terms, we have f squared. One time we have it times sine squared, and one time we have it times cosine squared. So if we factor out the f squared, we have f squared times sine squared plus cosine squared, and sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So we just have f squared times 1. Hmm. So, that, so that tells me that a little bit of length, when your parameterization comes from a polar curve, so a little bit of length along a polar curve, is going to be the square root of df d theta squared plus f squared, f squared. Now another way to write that, since r is f of theta, let's see, we could do dr d theta squared plus r squared. Oh, this is all d theta, not underneath the root. So end that root and put your d theta there. And so basically what we did is we just took the, the formula for the length differential that applies to a parametric curve. And we said, well, hey, this polar curve gives a parametric curve. So we can just use, we can just take that length differential and figure out what it turns out to be 
in the special case of a parameterization that comes from a polar curve. And it came out to have this kind of neat form here. We have dr d theta squared plus r squared underneath the square root all times d theta. So that's where the formula in the book comes from. It's just realizing that every polar curve gives you a parameterization. There's the length, right? So we've got dr d theta squared plus r squared underneath the square root. You just add up all those lengths from the starting angle to the ending angle and you get the total length. Okay, this is just the integral from alpha to beta of what we were calling dl, right? Summing up all the little length elements. Let's do an example of this. Find the length of this curve. Theta goes from 0 to pi, um, and we can assume that a is some positive number. So we have a curve, and they're not really telling us exactly what, um, what that value of a is, but that value is just going to stretch the curve out somehow. Let's figure out what we get for length. Well, first off, we, we know that r squared is going to be a squared sine to the fourth theta over 2. We can also calculate dr d theta dr d theta, if you, if you take the derivative of this, the a is, a, a is constant, the 2 from the sine squared comes down, you get sine theta over 2, times the derivative of what's inside, well the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so we get the cosine of theta over 2, times the derivative of what's inside that, the derivative of theta over 2 is just 1 half, so this 1 half cancels this 2, so if you calculate dr d theta squared, you get a squared sine squared theta over 2 cosine squared so sine squared of theta over 2 times the cosine squared of theta over 2 so adding those up r squared plus dr d theta squared gives us a squared sine to the fourth theta over 2 plus a squared sine squared theta over 2 cosine squared theta over 2. Now from these two we can pull out a common a squared and both terms have at least a sine squared so we can pull out a squared sine squared theta over 2. We pull that out of the first term we're left with a sine squared theta over 2. We pull out the second term and we're left with just a cosine squared theta over 2. And by our Pythagorean identity the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of that same angle turns out to be 1. So what we really need to be integrating then is the length. It's going to be the integral from 0 to pi of the square root of a squared sine squared theta over 2 d theta. Now this is just the square root of something squared so technically that would just be the absolute value of a sine theta over 2. But if you look at the bounds on theta, theta is going from 0 to pi, and from 0 to pi the sine is always positive. We, we're told to assume that a is positive, and so the absolute value of a number that's definitely positive has got to just be the number. So we can drop those absolute value bars and go ahead and do the integral. Now the antiderivative of sine is a negative cosine, so we're going to have negative 2a cosine theta over 2. The 2 here is needed because we take the derivative of cosine, you get negative sine of theta over 2 times the derivative of what's inside, there's an extra 1 half. So this 2 is in, is antici is in anticipation of that. So we evaluate between 0 and pi. When we plug in pi, we get negative 2a times the cosine of pi over 2 minus minus 2a times the cosine of 0. Okay, well, minus minus is plus, isn't it? The cosine of pi halves is 0, so that wipes all this out. The cosine of 0 is 1, and so we're left with an answer that the length here is equal to 2a.